This is part two of this video series. If you want to download this packet tracer file, this activity that I created, you can do so from my website at danscourses.com. The link is below the YouTube video. By the video description, you can find the link to the page where you can download this packet tracer activity. So in the last video, we figured out our subnets that we're going to need to use for the green network and the yellow network. We needed to set up variable length subnet masks, or VLSM, to create a network for 60 hosts, satisfy 60 hosts, and another network to satisfy for just 14 hosts. And this is what we came up with, 192.168.4.64 with a slash 26. This will go from 64 to 127. And the 192 network, that's going to go all the way up to 207, slash 28. So that's our two networks that we're going to be using. So let's get started um, configuring this packet tracer activity. And what I'm going to do is, is now look here and it says right here, number four under IPv4 addressing, the router gets the first usable address in the subnet. So that's going to be easy. And the PCs get the fifth and sixth usable address in the green subnet and the fifth in the yellow subnet. All right, so let's start with the green network here and give these two PCs the fifth and sixth address. So we'll go to PC0 here. We'll open that up and go to IP configuration. I'll move this over here. And we can bring up our notepad document here and leave that visible. And you can see here that the green network is the 4.64 subnet. So the first usable is 65. So if we count 65, 66, 67, 68, 69. So the first or the fifth, I'm sorry, the fifth usable address is 69. 65, 66, 67, 68, 69. So we'll just put that in here right now. 192.168.4.69. And it's a slash 26 subnet mask. So that will be a 255.255.255. 192. And the default gateway will be the first usable host. The router is going to have the first address in the network. So that will be 192.168.4.65. All right, perfect. Now we don't have, we're not dealing with DNS in these activities because we're not resolving names to IP addresses. Now what about this IPv6 configuration here? Maybe we can do this at the same time and that way we can save some time. So what I'll do is, is I'll go back to the instructions here and let's look at what we need to do. So IPv6 addressing, you can see here it says the green network. It's going to be 2001 DB8 CC CC colon one. So it's the one subnet. And it says that PC zero will be colon A. All right, so that looks pretty easy. Let's put that in right now. So we'll say 2001 colon db8 colon cccc colon the one subnet then a double colon for zeros and then an a and the prefix will be 64 and then what about this gateway we'll look over here again you can see here it was a slash 64 that's how i figured that out and then down here link local for R1, the link local address will be FE80 colon colon 1. And we've learned in the curriculum that the gateway that is picked up by the PCs on the network is usually the router's link local address. So that's what we'll use, FE80 colon colon 1. All right, so now we have our IPv4 configuration and our IPv6 configuration PC0 is done. So we'll close that. We'll go to PC1 and do the same thing. So we'll say 192.168.4.70, that's the sixth address, usable address in the network, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. All right, and then the subnet mask, which is 192, and then the gateway address, and then the, let's see here, 2001, this is the IPv6. And I believe B is the address that this second PC will get. Let's see here, yep, colon B. And that'll be a slash 64. 
and then the link local address fe80 colon colon one now if i designed this activity correctly you should be able to get all of this information just off of this main screen here in these instructions and so far so good there's no problems here i think that's pretty good so let's close this and move over to the yellow subnet we'll start with pc2 here it says that pc2 is going to get the fifth usable address in this network so ip configuration all right, so uh, 192.168.4.192. So the first usable is 193, 194, 195, 196, 197. So it will be 197. So we'll put that in here. And then the subnet mask is a slash 28, which is, let's see here, 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 is 240. All right, there we go. If we draw this out, if we draw the subnet mask out in binary and we list out all of the ones. All right, let's say that's 24 ones. I'm not exactly sure that's 24 ones, but close enough. Let's see here. No, we're short one here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. No, we're short extra one there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, got an extra one here. Okay, so there's 24 ones, and then you do 25, 26, 27, 28, one, two, three, four. All right, so if we add these up, so we've got 255 here, 255 here, 255 here, and then this bit is in the 128's position, so it's 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 equals 240. 192.168.4. Dot the first usable address will be 193. So that's for our router. We go to the IPv6 configuration. And I believe the second subnet is the two subnet, but let's check just to make sure. Once again, it didn't like me leaving the address unfinished there. So 2001 db8 cccc colon 2 and pc2 will be colon a so there we go 2001 colon db8 colon cccc colon 2 colon colon a 64 and fe80 colon colon 1 that's curious that the link local address is the same address as it was in the other network. And that's because the link local address is only locally significant. So you can use the same link local address uh, for the router on each side, on each network, basically on the green network and the yellow network can both be FE80 colon colon one. So that makes it very simple to configure, which is nice. It's another benefit of IPv6. So this looks good. You want to maybe look things over one last time before you figure you're done. And I'd say we're good. So now let's do the server. Now the server is slightly different. We'll take a look here. And it says here that the server gets the second address in the subnet. The second address in the subnet. Well, if the subnet is the 192 subnet that we've created right here, then the second address would be 194. So let's put that in. So IP configuration, 192.168.4.194. And then the subnet mask, which is still a 240. And then the gateway, which will be the first address in the network, the first usable address, which is 193. Once again, didn't like me leaving that unfinished. Perfect, and then the IPv6 address, let's take a look here. You can see here on the yellow network, the server will get colon F, colon F. So 2001 colon DB8. Okay, that looks good. I can compare the two and open up 
each one side by side just to double check the configurations, which is not a bad idea. And you can see here that I've got the subnet correct on each one, PC getting A, server getting F. You can see that the link local addresses were auto configured using EUI 64, so we didn't have to deal with that. And then our gateways are the same here, correct, correct, and everything looks good. So now we've configured the addressing IPv4 and IPv6 on the PCs and the PC and the server. If we look to our completion rate, you can see that we're already 29% complete on the activity, which is a good sign.